Right, I'm not sure what the exact time is, so I'm going to take an average of the time on the screen and the time on the uh, wee... Uh, uh, okay, thanks, Councillor Mayor. Uh, so, just first off, um, please note this meeting may be recorded and subsequently made available to the public for listening purposes. I think there's also been uh, a couple of times where members could possibly speak more clearly um, into the microphones, but I'm sure we'll get feedback from the appropriate staff. But if you could just sort of speak carefully, uh, and they'll get recorded for public listening. So, um, welcome officially to the DG First Management Committee of Tuesday 28th. Uh, it's just gone two o'clock. Could I get a note of said and apologies, please? Good afternoon. I have six members present and I have apologies from Councillors Yen, Hislop and McCutcheon. Councillors Tate and Wiper are not present, but they may be along shortly. Thank you. And are there any declarations of interest? No. Um, before we get into the items of business, uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to praise and thank the DG First staff for their commitment, hard work and response during the festive floods. Roads, building services, facility services and care and support staff all came out over the festive period to deal with the floods and help those most needy during the emergency. We should also remember to recognise it's not just about helping in emergencies to clear roads, deal with power outages and deal with flooding, but the DG First care and support staff are out across the region endeavouring to reach their service users in some of the most rural areas of the Priest and Galloway. Uh, sadly, these terrible weather events were then followed by a series of horrific accidents that staff from DG First attended and dealt with the recovery procedures in a very professional manner. I'd like to draw members' attention to the January edition of the DG First Staff Newsletter, uh, which you should all have a copy on your desk there. There's numerous good news stories within the publication, and I'd like to highlight the partnership working on the trunk roads, STARS, and the modern apprenticeship perspectives to their employment. Chair, if I, if I may, just to, to add to that, we've just had notification uh, from ABSI, the Association of Public Sector Excellence, that... Uh, one of our uh, modern apprentices has been shortlisted for the uh, Scottish Apprentice of the Year Awards, uh, which are being held up in uh, Peebles in early February. So uh, just to give a uh, notification that Shane Steenson again will be representing the Peace and Galloway at that event. Thank you very much. That's good news. Um, Chair, so could I could just people? ask, uh, what trade was that in, Ronnie? Uh, he's an electrician. Okay, so on to the minute of the meeting of the 14th. Now, there's, I've got a query about this. Uh, I think it's under item 7 in the minute, um, which relates to, if I recall correctly, and I'm sure members will be able to help me with this, um, we, were, we did ask or agree to receive monthly reports by ward for elected members on programmed works um, and repairs. So I was just wondering if the if we'd be happy to rectify the minute in that regard. Councillor Driver. Thanks, Chair. I think it was me that suggested that they had a ward-by-ward -ward, um, monthly report, and I think Charles was going to organise that anyway as part of the process of improvements it was going to have for, for members, and I certainly did see that, and it was, it was um, suggested to this committee to get that particular thing. So if that was to go into the minutes, then I'd be happy for that. I don't know how, if Charles wants to say something about that and how far on we, we are with that. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I mean, are we happy to agree that that's what we did, in fact, agree? Yep, to receive all that. Yes. And, uh, Charles, would you be able to maybe add a wee bit? Because obviously we've not received the, the monthly updates yet, so maybe you could give us a brief update on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, the current position regarding our works programme uh, is that we've actually been working on an online works programming tool which members should be able to view through the council's website. Uh, we've been reluctant to create the, the, the workload that we had before doing this by going around all our areas. So it's got to the stage uh, just last week that we've got all the data in the new system. However, we don't want to, to launch the system just as quickly as that. We want to give the members time to familiarise themselves with the system. So this week I will be sending out a works programme to each member that will cover their area, their ward, 
and it, and it will be part of the new system in that it will be a PDF document, but if members wish so, they can actually click on the scheme itself and they can view uh, that on, a, on the basis of a map. So it's a sort of early introduction of part of the, 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 the programme that will be available from April onwards, uh, and hopefully it will introduce members to the system. Uh, in conjunction with that, I'm aware there's a lot of other work we do other than just these key schemes. So I'll be providing members with a briefing, uh, particularly on where we are with carriageway repairs. Members may recall that we actually were awarded in late October uh, £600,000 for short lengths of overlay and planned structural patching. We've in, in November, we've inspected all our roads. We've got an idea of what the backlog is with our patching, it's a snapshot only, mind you, in November, but we've done this uh, for the first time uh, on, a, on a map basis, so we've actually got them pinpointed on a map, which is the forerunner of our mobile working, actually. It's a very crude version of it, I have to add. So we've taken all that information uh, and we've used that to plan out a patching programme, which actually started this week, uh, and I'll be giving members advice on that, where we are with that, uh, and how long it'll take us to complete. But we've not just got the, the £600,000, we've got some of our own revenue money to add to that, so we're probably spending around £200,000 in each of our geographical areas on carriageway repairs and, and a planned approach. Uh, Councillor Dreiber first. Thanks, yes. <coughs> so what you're saying is we have got money for pothole repairs, Unlike what some people are saying is that we've tried up uh, funding for those particular uh, repairs. Yes, I can confirm we have got money for pothole port repairs and, and, and always have done so. Uh, I can confirm that. Councillor Peacock. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was just wondering, um, sort of quickly on the back of uh, Vachi's comment there, um, there seems to have been a, a notice of uh, a noticeable decline in pothole repairs over the past couple of months. Now, understandably, the weather will play a, a significant part in that. Um, but I, I'm, I'm glad to hear Charles confirm that there is still money available for these repairs to continue throughout until the end of the financial year. Um, so that, that has come as, as some sort of comfort because of an incident that uh, I've been made aware of just over the weekend. Um, and again, it relates to potholes that was reported uh, quite some time ago. Um, part, of the, part of the problem I'm finding with the, the system that we have now is the fact that once we as members or members of the public have reported a, a pothole or an incident, that is the last we hear of it. Now, I know that the system that Charles is on about is, is working towards that so that members will eventually get feedback on when the repair will be done, you know, to what sort of um, state the repair has been carried out, et cetera, et cetera. But, but it's a big stumbling block, I find, for, for myself as a member. I'm sure other members are, are across the region will have the same issues. So that is something that we really need to, to get focused on. Um, I know the system's been worked in. I know there's IT issues there that, that are being bottomed out. Um, but it's something that we need to really concentrate on to get that system up and working, and so we all know what's going on, when it's going on. Um, but moving on from that, Chair, um, as, uh, with Charles, as he mentioned, the £600,000 that was made available and the programme of works that will be set up to, uh, to spend that money, I wonder if, there is, if there's any room for, for member input into suggestions for some of these areas that could be overlaid or, or has the programme already been set. I understand that it's already been set, but if Charles, if you might want to confirm that. Yeah, yes, the programme has already been set, but it's based on a, a full inspection of our network that was carried out in a professional manner. The guys were brought in first. They were, tra they were they're already trained, they're already qualified, but we spoke to them exactly on what we wanted them to find, uh, what we wanted them to look for, and it's been identified on a prioritised basis. So, you know, we're going forward on the works uh, on the basis of a, a mass inspection and not just one isolated area. Uh, the, the money's been fairly divided, I would suggest, across the areas, but uh, the, the work that we're doing is focused on the, the full inspection that we've carried out. I have to say that it, it, there, there perhaps are some potholes evident uh, after the winter period. Uh, 
We've had two weeks when we couldn't get any hot material from the quarries because they'd closed down. And then subsequent to that period, we've had the, the weather conditions that we've had to deal with. Uh, and the guys have either been dealing with those weather conditions or they haven't been able to carry out patching works because of those weather conditions. So I'm hopeful that, you know, we've kicked off the new year uh, now with this planned approach, which should hopefully reduce the, sorry, not hopefully, it will reduce the number of outstanding carriageway repairs. It might interest members to note that there were about 5,000 outstanding repairs identified, which is a considerable number when we're trying to deal with one-off inquiries and inform people about when the repair is carried out, particularly when we don't have a, 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 an electronic version of recording these. Uh, the good news is, and what we're finding is, that it's over a year ago now that we went down this approach to first-time permanent, and the key issue is that the the ones that the, the repairs that we're carrying out aren't old repairs that are failed. Uh, are repairs that we're making, the permanent ones, are staying in. And I believe that's a success story. And we've got to hold our nerve and go through that process. And I think this, uh, I hope this planned patching that we've got you know, going on at the moment, right through to the end of the financial year. And then, of course, we've got the start of the next financial year with other programmes of work coming online uh, pre-patching for our surface dressing, our surface dressing, etc. I hope we'll, we'll, we'll see an improvement. Thank you very much. Well, we we'll look forward to the, the end of month reports coming out to all members and then hopefully progress, as Councillor Peacock's alluded to, developing the system so it's much more responsive and people are kept informed. Okay. With that, if we move on to item four, uh, sorry, if we're, sorry, could I just get a proposal and seconder for the minute, I should say? I'll propose that. Happy to propose. Happy to second. Thank you. Uh, so item four is the Revenue Budget Monitoring Report 2012-13 uh, for the period ended 30th November 2013. Uh, this is a routine monitoring report. It covers the period up to the end of uh, November, over a month ago. Although the latest monitoring to the end of December is showing a similar overall position, uh, the department's predicting that they will have a slight underspend or break even for the year, but the impact of very severe adverse weather could change that um, if the costs were higher than the £500,000 of contingency funding set aside to meet additional weather-related costs. Uh, just also for information, minus in, in the report, if you see a minus, it indicates an underspend. Uh, and with that, um, I'll hand over to uh, Caroline to see if she has anything to add to the report. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I really don't think I need to add any more to, to the report, and, um, but would be willing to answer any questions that you have. Councillor Jaibra. Thank you. I'm just looking at the overspend for waste and collection service, and you've got some of the key issues there uh, with regards to the, the commercial collection reducing over that particular period. Have we seen any shift in that in the last couple of months coming back to council operators? Because I, I believe that a lot of people went private and they're not happy with the service that they're getting. Um, since the implementation of the commercial waste activity, I think it's fair to say that we've seen one or two uh, customers drifting away and we've seen one or two customers moving back to the local authorities. So overall, the, the process has, has been generally successful taking on board the, the, the new the new ethos of commercial activity, and uh, we're holding sort of business as business as usual, but we're proactively seeking as many new customers uh, as, the, as we can to come into that. Councillor Peacock. Thank you, Chair. Um, whilst I appreciate that it's a, a revenue budget monitoring report, um, the various underspends that are, that are mentioned uh, they do not give members any uh, idea as to how this has affected the relevant service that the, the underspend relates to. Um, in particular, the, the roads underspend, um, which I appreciate is a, a small amount in the overall budget, uh, but the street cleaning, uh, which last year in the, in the council's budget was cut by 200,000, and we're still looking at an underspend on that of 25. So that's 225,000 pounds in this last financial year has been taken off that particular budget. So that has got to have quite a dramatic effect on the service itself. And while the figures relate um, just to the, the monitoring of the actual figures, I understand that, but 
Um, I do feel it needs to be mentioned and members should realise, you know, that there is a big effect on the services um, depending on the value of the underspend. Should I respond to that, Ronnie? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Again, with all these, um, you know, details of underspends, etc. I think the easiest way to put it, it's down to prudent management of the spend as we go through the year. There are lots of other factors that can affect where your financial position is as you report. You could uh, look at uh, profiling out your wage bill and your, your spend against that wage bill, and that could have changed due to other activities you've planned over time has been less, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I take on board your comments about uh, detailing underspends, but those underspends are managing the overall budget over the term of the year to ensure that we're not in a position uh, at our next committee and saying, members, we've overspent. This is, this is like managing your own bank account. It's ensuring that we have the, the appropriate funds uh, within our coffers to allow us to deliver the services. And the overall plan for the service is set at the start of the year, and that is mapped out so to ensure that we deliver those levels of service. And picking on street cleansing, if you look at the the, the performance stats against the, the, the outputs, the lean surveys and the, the lambs for the condition of the town, that's all mapped against that. So it's, it's very much ensuring that we are prudently managing the accounts so that we're not in a position of overspend as far as we can uh, deliver to the service. Councillor Schreiber. Thanks, yeah. <coughs> I, I think um, well, Councillor Peacock you know, rings, rings a bell. I mean, they're, they're not so much on, on the spend, but what I'd like to um, perhaps get some, some confidence in is that there's no reduction in quality in the street cleaning. I mean, I haven't seen any, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that that's actually there. Chair, as, as we well know that, and as, as Councillor Peacock has, has highlighted, that there was a change to the, the budgetary profile for the service, and we have, we have matched the, the required outputs to the available budget. So uh, the service is still there. The, the scoring that we're, we're having in relation to um, what we're seeing on the streets is still, is still meeting the targets, and we're still scoring appropriately. Councillor Collins. Thank you. It's a similar question on 3.6. Um, quote, income from other catering outlets is particularly, uh, particularly those based in leisure centres has reduced since last year, but this has largely been met by reductions in costs. I mean, while slashing menus, for example, and provision, are we losing numbers of... Uh, customers within the leisure centres as a result of the measures taken to reduce costs? Uh, Kate, would you like to come in on that one? Thank you. If I could just ask you, Councillor, um, about your point about slashing the menus. I'm not aware there's been a significant change in the menu provision. For that, the, the management of the leisure facilities is down to, a, at the moment, how we're planning to take forward the refurbishment of DG1 and the ice bowl. So, the, excuse me, the information on that relates to managing the staffing budget, not reducing the service we provide. Well, the, specific, the specific instance that I was uh, thinking about was the, redu the dramatic reduction in the available menu at DG1, and whether or not that was the way that the costs were being reduced. No, the change in the menus in DG1 was due to the reduced footfall within DG1 at the moment, and the operational decision was made that we needed to meet the customer's requirements, hence the operations within that were changed to suit the menu for the people visiting DG1. So the question still remains, have we got, and I recognise it's not um, exclusively for this committee, have we got a record of the fact of whether or not the reduction in service is bringing about a reduction in footfall? No, but we have a business case that we agree with uh, Sport and Leisure, Community, Community and Customer Services, 
about the provision that is provided within DG1. And if you wish, I can give you all the background information regarding the changes, the operational changes, etc., that were agreed with community customer services to meet and control the costs in DG1. Thank you. Any further questions? With that then, uh, are we happy to go to the recommendations 2.1 and 2.2 and agree both of them? Thank you very much. Item 5 is the Trading Operations Monitoring Report 2012-13 to for the period ended 30 November 2013. As with the last report, this covers the period up to the end of November 2013 and the Department is currently predicting the trading operations will return a prudent surplus or profit of £70,000. Uh, and again, in this report, minus indicates a surplus. Um, I should mention commercial activity associated with building services and the trunk roadworks has increased considerably compared to this time last year, which has resulted in increases to costs matched by higher income. Uh, again, Caroline, is there anything you'd like to add to the report? So, sorry. Um, no, Chair. J well, just to, to, to reiterate the fact that um, obviously with the trading account, um, if we get more income in, we usually have to spend more on um, supplies and services. So um, the problem is that I set a budget, which is a kind of notional budget that squares back to zero at the beginning of the year, just to give an indication of um, amounts. And therefore, they will vary quite m much more than... Um, you would expect in an ordinary revenue budget. Um, that, just to clarify that point. Thank you. Any questions? Archie, uh, Councillor Driver, I saw. Thank, thank you. I'm just looking at 3.6 and the additional one, of course, associated with the implementation of the new computer system of many based on cutting up there may be a small deficit within vehicle maintenance for 2013-14 only. Is that just a one-off cost at the end of the day? Um, and we're not expecting any more cost on that. Uh, through you, Chair, no, this is just down to uh, linking in uh, vehicle maintenance into the total mobile system uh, that's used across uh, several parts of DG First and the tablet devices for the mechanics, etc., to use. Um, so, um, as you say, it's uh, a one off cost. Councillor Peacock. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, it's, a, it's a good position to be in that, that we're retaining the surplus in the, the trading operation. Um, and hopefully as the, the economy grows, so will, will that surplus to, uh, to, the, to the operation. Um, just uh, a bit of an aside, we have the, obviously the main um, operations mentioned here and, and the figures for them, though. Uh, but I was wondering, with, as we've had presentations in the past at this committee on the training solutions that you provide, to, to outside bodies. Um, and I, I was wondering if you have any sort of information onto that as to whether that particular service is in arrears or you know, if it's making a profit or a loss and, and how does that contribute to the rest? I mean, I'm not quite sure. According to the headings that we have there, I wouldn't see it fitting in underneath any of those headings. So is that, in, that I would imagine, is included within the whole of the operation, uh, within the trading business of DG First, but, but there's no real sort of mention. So, if, if just something on that, Ronnie. Through you, Chair, again. Uh, the 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 Garrick training unit uh, primarily uh, is is a unit that covers its own costs and breaks even every year. It's because the the vast majority of the training activities is associated with training our own people. What we don't want to see is, if you want to say, it, stealing from Peter to pay Paul. So it balances uh, its books by bringing in additional uh, outside income, which is, forms a small part of it. I think I reported to committee previously about 15% of its uh, trading activity is external to the council. So it really is, uh, it does external trading, small, small amount to uh, private companies, utilities, etc., across Dumfries and Galloway and beyond. But primarily we always look to have that uh, breaking even at the end of the year as a balancing item to ensure that it's it's not charging back into the other parts of the trading services and revenue activities and taking money away from uh, from the other. Any further questions from the floor? 
Uh, it was just one quick one, just about the increased um, activity under uh, supplies and services, which is a, a significant 6.2 million. And I was just wondering if um, you could maybe speak to that a little bit. Thank you. Yes, Chair. This is, uh, as our finance officer was saying at the start, this is down to uh, when the projected budgets are set at the start of the year, the, the variance um, that comes in from increased business. And this is clearly highlighted this year with the additional uh, business uh, that we have acquired through the construction of the zero waste parks um, for the new uh, zero waste project across Dumfries and Galway. This is basically paying all the bills for some contractors and local uh, material suppliers across Dumfries and Galloway. And one of the other major ones is the increased turnover with Scotland Transserve on the, on the trunk road network, which has been very much beneficial to the service. So hence, the variance shows a big step up uh, to what had been previously uh, projected at the time of the, when the budget uh, information was set. Thank you. Any further questions? No. With that, then, can we move to the recommendations um, at number two? To note that based on the first eight months expenditure, the trading operation is currently projected to return a surplus of £70,626. Thank you. I have no further business. The meeting's over. Thank you.